My name is Fabian Westerheide and I am an entrepreneur. As a teenager, I wanted to do something good, I wanted to change the world, and I went into politics. Well, after a couple of years, I realized that politics is not the best way to do something good for society, and not the fastest. <laughs> so instead, I, I chose to become an entrepreneur, and I went to this business school here to learn how to be one. And afterwards, I went to Berlin and to start software companies, and over the years, I've been involved in 35 software companies as a founder and as an investor. At the same time, I'm a nerd, so I love science fiction. I love books and movies and all this, and it never left me. So over the years, I was able to find my passion in helping companies from becoming science fiction to science facts. That's why I'm here today to speak about you, that AI is eating our world, and that we should be happy about it. Could artificial intelligence be the last invention of humankind? Some say, well, let's say, yes, is the easy answer. Um, some say, well, it could be the end because it will destroy us. Elon Musk, Stephen Hawking, uh, Bill Gates, they are warning us. But on the other hand, we have people like Ray Kurzweil or Peter Diamantis who say, no, artificial intelligence will lead us in, a, uh, in an age of prosperity, abundance, and super long life. So both is possible, but it's in our hands to choose our own fate. And why is artificial intelligence popular again? I mean, the concept, we already heard it, is old. The Greeks, the Romans, the Chinese, they already had the idea of human-like machines. Well, today, we understand on artificial intelligence software, which is mimicking the human, which is seeing the world like us, is hearing the world like us, is maybe thinking like us, or is supposed to look like us. So, in the last five years, three factors came together, which created a new hype for artificial intelligence. It is processing power, it is data, and it is machine learning. We all know that computers used to be very, very huge. They used to fill whole rooms and were at the same time very slow and very stupid. But thanks to Moore's law, which is valid for the last 50 years, every 18 months computers get double their speed and half the cost. So imagine a world where everything is getting faster and faster and cheaper too. Just imagine your own brain would get better 18, every 18 months. It would be very helpful, especially for you. <laughs> well, makes it easier. So today, every one of you has a supercomputer in your pocket, in your phone. So every one of you has already computers which are way more powerful than all these computers which filled whole rooms. And this won't stop. So computers are getting faster first. And the second is the amount of data we generate is increasingly significant. And this was the bottleneck for research in AI in the 80s, but this is the reason why AI is going through the roof today. Why? Or with the internet. And thanks to the internet and the mobile area, whatever you do out there, it is tracked. Wherever you go, what you eat, when you sleep, and so forth. Also, it's measured. And whatever is measured and tracked is stored. So we generate every year more data than before, and this won't stop. So imagine a world where you have very strong computers and a lot of data, and what do you make with this? And this is the reason why Google, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, why they invest billions into artificial intelligence. Because they have the servers and the computing power, and they have all the data, and now they want to make more money with this. And then we have progress in machine learning. Now, if you want to build an AI, you have three ways to do it. The good old AI is an expert system, so you, you take the knowledge of humans, write code, and then the AI, AI is able to combine this, you know, but whatever you want to have as a result, you have to pre-code before. The second way is the old way you use machine learning, which means a little bit that you have a problem, you look for an algorithm which fits the problem, so for every problem you have an algorithm. But the third field, which is in, got interesting, which excites me the most, is deep learning. So deep learning are neural nets in layers. And to make it easy, um, you have two points, Yes, and if the machine learns that something is right, the path between these points is getting strengthened. And if the machine learns that something is wrong, the path between points is getting weakened. So with this help, and with co uh, you can build cognitive machines. So present machines, this exists, is they gather their own data, they run simulations, and it used to be that they propose, execute, you know, some actions, but today they don't, no human interaction anymore, they execute on their own. They measure their output, and then they optimize again. And they don't do this like us, step by step, they can do this 
simultaneous parallel. They do this 100,000 times within seconds. So they learn very, very fast. At the same time, these computers are like a black box. We don't know anymore what's happening inside. We know what's flowing in, what's coming out, but we don't know what's happened inside. So we already lost control about the machines, but this is the way how, you know, how they learn. It's the same about kids. Yes, you can't control what's inside the kid anymore at a certain time because they have to learn on their own. So today we build cognitive machines, machines who are able to learn. And I call them narrow artificial intelligences. They are artificial intelligences because they have a certain level of intelligence and honestly they are even better than we humans are in certain tasks. Once they are trained, they are superior to us. But they are narrow because they can't transfer this knowledge yet. An AI which is able to play chess can't play Go and an AI who is able to drive a car can't fly a plane. So we have narrow AIs already everywhere. Google is using them Yes, to figure out what you will type in before you have decided it yourself. <laughs> Netflix is using AI to tell you what you should watch, yes, based on your tastes and what other like. Every one of us has an AI at home, either Zero in your pocket or Cortana on your PC, or it could be Amazon Echo. And um, even if you think, well, this is not an AI, it's stupid, well, a friend of mine has a kid, the daughter, and she's five years old, and she's having deep conversations for hours with Siri. <laughs> really? It, she makes no difference. It's a f like a friend to her. She's asking Siri, how are you? How are you doing? What do you think today? And so forth. And this goes back and forth for hours. So the machine is only as stupid as you don't train it, but if you train it, yes, it's getting smarter and more adaptive to you. These machines can do it if we put in the energy and time. We ha all know that self-driving cars exist today, yes? Ten years ago we would have uh, thought, thought about this, today we know they exist. But every self-driving car from each producer has a different AI. Audi is having a different AI than Google has. Apple worked on one, yes, Comma that AI is working on one. Um, Uber just bought an AI company. So they all have different versions of AI there. But the interesting part is if, if one car is learning something, all the other cars learn it too. So if you train one piece of software, you can transfer this knowledge very easy to every other piece of software because it's like one big mind. It's like a swarm intelligence behind it. And this is something we humans struggle with. That's why we have universities, because we want to transfer with a very hard and long time the knowledge from one person to the other. We have AI in, car, uh, in trucks. We know they are self-driving cars. And to say it, we have AI in almost every more mature piece of electronics. AI is eating the world because you can ingest artificial intelligence in almost everything which has a chip, which has a microcomputer. AI will eat our world over the next years even more because it will be everywhere in your daily and business life. And it will make our world smarter, more engaging, more interactive, more adapting to you. The good part is these machines work for us. We do this because we want to. Throughout human history, always have invented machines so they do stuff for us. They work for us. And they work for us 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. They don't go on a strike, they don't want a raise, they go on sick, they, don't, they have no vacations. They are there always for us. At the same time, the more you use a machine, and especially artificial intelligence, the more you train it, the smarter it gets, the cheaper it gets. In contrast to us humans, yes, we want more salary the longer we work. So these machines work for us, and we want this. Yes, we invent them so they do the things we don't want to do. Yes, no one wants to be out there physical on the field. That's why we invented machines to do the physical work for us, which we don't want to do. And we don't like to do boring, mundane work on the assembly line. That's why we invented machines to do the boring stuff we don't want to do. And some of us don't like thinking either. Yes, and that's why we have invented machines who do the thinking work for us. <laughs> so we invent machines so they, they work for us. We always have done this and we will continue to do this. And we benefit from this. We benefit from this because we gain Lebenszeit. Lifetime, time to live. We have more time to do things we really like to do.
spend it with our girlfriend, wife, husband, our kids, to read a book, to travel the world, to study, to widen your mind, to start a company. Yes? Machines work so we can be more human and we can focus more on the essential things in life. And yes, this also means that they will do work. And I'm not standing here and telling you everything will be good. No, um, machines are replacing jobs. And we speak about 20 to 50% of current existing jobs which won't exist anymore in the next 30 years. It's the truth. I don't want to avoid it. And I brought you here a list of jobs and <laughs> Yes, now everyone is looking for one. Yes, which will be replaced by artificial intelligence? The good part is no AI will re replace you as a person. It is more that artificial intelligence is enabling you. You will use software and computers and machines to make out of more. You will use AI to do the jobs you don't want to do, so you have more free time to be creative, to interact with humans and to make decisions. Now people got interested, I see. <laughs> so AI won't replace you as a person, but AI will be there in replacing humans step by step. If you want to do something, by the way, with humans, yes, so in social interaction, you're on the good side. We haven't solved this yet. Uh -huh. I'm standing here today because I say we need to go beyond. We need to go beyond the system we're living in. We need to find a system where work is not needed anymore, where everyone has a purpose outside of a job too. We need to find a system where work is not the essential part, but where we become humans even without this. A future where maybe when 50% don't have a job anymore, we still don't end up in civil war. There are some solutions out there, like the unconditional basic income, which we should discuss. I don't know the truth, Anther. I'm here because I need your minds and your energy so that we all together find a solution for this, that we start discussing this, that we start to think about this, because it is a serious challenge, especially for our generation. And to finish this, I tell you, this is the best human time ever. It is a good time to live in. Just compare where your grand-grandparents were, how they were living. The last 200 years, our average life expectancy raised from 30 years to 85. Newborn kids today have 100 years. So everyone above 30, we can be happy to live today and not in the past. At the same time, especially in the Western world, we have 10 times more wealth, 10 times more income than we used to have. And we work less for this. So we, we don't work more, we work less. We used to work 80 hours a week, today we work on average 40 hours a week. So each of us is living longer, we have more money in our pocket, we can buy more things with this, and we work less for it. This is a positive trend. This is a trend of the last three, four generations, and this won't stop. This won't stop because we embrace technology. We use technology to make more. And if it's artificial intelligence, super intelligence, nanorobotics, virtual reality, yes, they all will come with challenges, and they mean we need to adapt to it as a person, as a company, as a university, and also as a society in a system. But each technology also brings us the opportunity to have a longer life, a life with more happiness and more wealth. This is the future I'm fighting for. This is the future we all should fight for. This is the reason why I get up every morning. Thank you. <laughs>